The importance of boron as a supplement. Is it important to supplement with? Is it for everyone? What dosage? And so on. So This is the TRT and Hormone Optimization YouTube channel. And if you want to learn all about the science-based information on this topic, consider subscribing, hit that notification bell, and you'll be on your way. Welcome to the TRT and Hormone Optimization YouTube channel. And today we have, as a guest, back here on the channel, Dr. Jeffrey Rutbush. Welcome, Jeffrey. Thanks for having me back, Stephen. Looking very much forward to sharing some information uh, with, the, with the podcast viewers. Thank you. So let's talk about the importance of boron as a supplement. Is it important to supplement with? Is it for everyone? What dosage? And so on. So I'll give you the word. Thanks, Stephen. Well, let me start by saying that when I was a sports medicine resident and fellow in, in San Diego last century, uh, there were a lot of Canadians in my, in my class. And so I learned a lot about a couple of, well, one's a PhD researcher. And his name was Dr. Fred Hatfield. And if you remember Dr. Fred Hatfield, he was Dr. Squat. You know, he was... He's a PhD now, not an MD, but he had a book that I was exposed to in my sports med training out there in San Diego. And the book was called Nature's Sports Pharmacy, Nature's Sports Pharmacy by Dr. Squat. And, you know, in it, he mentions uh, all these, you know, supplements, particular natural therapies. That's why it's called Nature's Sports Pharmacy. And he mentions uh, the adaptogens we're going to talk about today, and particularly um, ashwagandha. But Dr. Michael Colgan, Dr. Michael Colgan is another PhD researcher from Vancouver, I think, Canada. Our great book, Dr. Michael Colgan, Sports Nutrition Guide. Now, Dr. Colgan is one of the foremost knowledgeable resources, uh, scientists in sports nutrition. And I learned a lot in my training from him, from Dr. Michael Colgan. And if you want to talk about boron first and foremost, I want you to all remember that boron has a lot to do with sex hormone optimization and bone health, you know, B for B. Some people don't like talking about boron unless they talk about strontium also. And that's one of the things that uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Colgan mentions. In fact, he, his chapter on boron, he, he puts it together with strontium for bone health. Now, there's been a lot of hype in sports medicine, sports nutrition about what boron can do. So I found it to be one of the one of the elements that's least understood. That's a lot of gray area. And if you research the PhDs, now the PhDs, remember, they do their research. These guys are doing they do the random controlled clinical trials, RCCTs, versus the MDs who pretty much you know look at it from an anecdotal study. No research the. Uh, the literature, but so I, I put a lot of um, confidence, in, so to say, in Dr. Michael Colgan, who does the research, he actually does experiments with boron. So let me go into some of the things that he found uh, regarding boron, all right? So as I mentioned earlier, it's great for sex hormone, uh, uh, hormone uh, optimization. He feels it's essential for production of steroid hormones, all steroid hormones, in humans. Now, he didn't say animals here. He's done the studies in humans, uh, especially androgen hormones, the androgen hormones for muscle accretion, and in calcium, magnesium, and phosphorus metabolism. Now, when we think of calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, think of bone health. Henceforth, it's very well known for bone health. So in my studies, uh, I came across the fact that, in essence, if you are not boron deficient, it doesn't seem to do much good. 
for muscle accretion or optimizing male hormone. Now therein lies the rub because you can get plenty of boron in water supplies, in the food supply, especially the vegetarians. They, they seem to not be deficient in uh, a boron. Or remember, after World War II, when, um, when after post-World War II, when they started farming with simply nitrogen, uh, potassium, and phosphorus, yeah. Um, there has been a lot of diminution in natural soils supply of boron. So given that, we know that the, the, the soils are depleted in boron, so therefore the foods are depleted in boron. So more and more people are probably suboptimal now in boron than pre-World War II. Having said that, Let's discuss some of the ways you can maximize uh, boron and the, the safety of boron, all right? Dr. Colgan has done some research. He feels that the best way to get boron and maximize androgen secretion, you know, for muscle accretion, muscle accretion is to go 10 milligrams per day. Before we continue, if you appreciate the content we bring to this channel, check out the Amazon links in the description of this video. These are the links to the products we use, going from supplements, protein powder, pre, post, intra-workout, anti-aging cream, sunscreen, needles and syringes to inject, and so on. If you'd like to purchase one of those products, please use the direct link so that it will earn us a few cents as a tip and you'll be guided directly to the products we recommend. Thanks in advance. Okay, so 10 milligrams per day, he found, increases estrogen in females by about 80%. But in males, he found that it increased free testosterone, yet at the same time, decreased estrogen. So that 10 milligram dose has different effects in males versus females. It increased free testosterone in men and decreased estrogen. So it's like a natural uh, aromatasing therapy. And it increases uh, estrogen in women by up to 80%. That's significant. He also found that in, in, in population studies, the uh, people who had men, the men who had the highest percentage or amounts of boron in their bodies had a 54% 54, 54 lowered risk of prostate cancer. So it seems to have anti-cancer effects. He found it also raises DHEA. Well, these are good things. Um, uh, again, so that's at the 10 milligram per day for men, 10 milligrams per day for women. But he also found that it's a great supplement for osteoarthritic pain, osteoarthritis. So he recommends in general that every body, men, males, females, get about six to nine milligrams per day for improved osteoarthritic pain. And you gotta hit that 10 milligram uh, mark per day to increase uh, hormone optimization for men for muscle accretion, increased estrogen. So it's a very safe window. I mean, I've seen studies there that you can go up to about 50 milligrams a day and be safe. I've even seen studies in my, in my research for this presentation that some people have gone up to 500 milligrams a day with no un, untoward side effects. But I feel that as long as you're under 50 milligrams, you'll be fine. But it seems that the, uh, the best effects of boron are at the 10 mg per day. Again, it's most effective if you're boron deficient. So unless you measure serum boron, you're not going to be, no, nobody knows, uh, you know, what the, I guess the normal amounts of boron should be. But I think it's got a very good safety profile. And given the fact that the 
soils have been depleted for so long uh, due to uh, uh, nitrogen, uh, phosphorus, and potassium only being repleted. I think it won't hurt anybody older who has osteoarthritic pain uh, to, to go ahead and try a 10 milligram per day dose of boron. Having said that, what is the best uh, method, so to speak? What's the best boron supplement? So, I, I, you know, between all my research, um, I found out that, according to Dr. Uh, Hogan, he recommends a boron citrate or boron aspartate. So if you're going to get a supplement and give it a shot, try boron citrate, boron aspartate. But there's also a form uh, called calcium fructoborate, which is in the literature. So there's all kinds of ways uh, to, to get boron. I would recommend, however, boron citrate or boron aspartate at 10 milligrams per day to give it a shot. Again, it's well within the safety margin of not being above 50. And it's at that level where six to 10 is the, is the level to get osteoarthritic pain relief. And at 10, you're gonna go ahead and, and uh, uh, increase uh, uh, testosterone in, in men, in particular free testosterone. And you're gonna get some mild aromatization inhibiting effect of the boron if you do that also. So let me wrap up and say, um, in, in, preparing, in preparing this lecture, I'll talk to you, I came across some notes from Dr. Jonathan Wright, who's a well-known MD that has been doing, you know, anti-aging hormone and men's sexual optimization lectures and writing books for many, many decades. An old time, he's even older than I am. Just, but let me give you a, 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 the viewers here what he recommends as a way to increase a man's natural or endogenous production of He recommends zinc picolinate or citrate. I know we're not discussing this. I'm just kind of this as a value added benefit for guys who want to write this down, and maximize the natural production of testosterone given natural therapy. Mm -hmm. So zinc picolinate, zinc citrate at 30 milligrams, two to three times per day. Manganese, which is found to stimulate luteinizing hormone, releasing hormone, at about 15 milligrams per day. Now, vitamin D, Dr. Greg says vitamin D is important. He recommends 5,000 IUs per, per day. I take 10. Magnesium at 250 to 350 uh, milligrams per day. And boron, he puts it at 10 milligrams. So I now I got an MD that's got years of research dealing with these natural therapies. You got a research PhD that says the same thing. 10 milligrams seems to be that mark. So in, in summary, again, zinc picolinate citrate, 30 milligrams, two to three times per day. Manganese, 15 milligrams per day. Vitamin D at, at least 5,000 IU. Magnesium, 250 to 350 milligrams per day. And boron, 10 milligrams per day. That's his recipe they, when he goes to lectures he tells people that on the best result for maximizing endogenous uh, testosterone production awesome thank you yeah thank you for watching this video now do this next click on one of these thumbnails to learn a ton more about trt and hormone optimization